Hi guys, welcome back again. Uh, this should be part nine and the final uh, in this uh, demonstration. And I'm Tony Leonard. Thanks again for watching. And um, just continuing on from where I left off, um, I think I pulled out a BPR render here. And uh, in this case, I actually wanted to do um, one treatment where I use the line plus the screen tone and I'm drawing in parts that don't exist. So if uh, you're taking a look here at Photoshop uh, where I am, I've actually just taken a simple round brush, added uh, some shape dynamics to it, I believe, uh, you know, so that it, the brush has a taper. And uh, I'm drawing in uh, things that uh, really I haven't uh, modeled yet. So this is kind of in the spot where we're in between, say, like comic book illustration and just going straight to an ink illustration. Uh, and or, you know, I'm sort of concepting out exactly the, the, the type of shape language that I want to continue with. So uh, I didn't, at this point, I think I had not really designed any arms uh, yet or legs. And it was just the head, neck, and torso. And, you know, I, I was trying to look for an idea uh, and play with using uh, some traditional hand-drawn line and integrating that into my BPR. So just really quickly to show, um, I added some tone on a separate layer. So there's actually two layers of uh, screen tone work. And there's an actual uh, inserted uh, layer for the arm. And then exactly under the shape of the, the arm's silhouette, what I did was I just added in white. So if you were if you were to think of these in traditional terms, I did a drawing with the BPR. And then on top of that, I painted over with just like, let's say white out. Uh, and the whiteout represents the shape of the arm and then did an ink drawing over that and then once that ink drawing was done I took and uh, actually did a treatment with a uh, screen tone so the same tool uh, using the uh, clone brush and filled it in and for the second part of this and lastly uh, I wanted to guys show you guys a, a BPR setup of, that I've done where I had a little bit more of a graphic look and as you can see in the uh, in the camera view, I've actually sculpted out uh, sort of a silhouette for the arms and part of the legs. And I'm going to actually be taking this and doing a few more things to it to build it out as an actual, uh, you know, retop of model. But for now, uh, you know, working conceptually, um, there's a couple of different things that I use for this, and that's uh, taking the BPR and relying more, not on just the, the comic book shader for any type of line art, but actually just using straight up uh, the 3D posterization uh, effects in the, uh, I believe it's in the render tab. And uh, no shadow, no AO, just a straight uh, shaded view, and also the mask. And uh, I copy that mask and use it as a selection. And this is handy because uh, somehow I got a little render error at the bottom of the right leg on the character. And so, uh, you know, since there's so much space, I just uh, filled the background with orange and it had an orange tint to my BPR shaded view and just sized up the character. Uh, I've got some nice fills uh, where the, the shadows are. And so I just use that as a sampling point uh, for the color picker and start drawing in some, some extra... Uh, details. So any type of cut lines or uh, I guess greebles uh, that I wanted to include in uh, defining some shapes so, so that we could understand some forms just a little bit more and then sampling that pale orange in there to uh, give you know a little bit of specularity and highlight to some of those shapes. And so uh, this is a process in which you know hey you know I've got a render you know let's do a paint over and, and you know crunch it out and some of those details, like, you know, I can always use this as reference. So when I go back to sculpting again on this, I can clean up some of these forms or add certain details or uh, remember, hey, this, there was a cool decal here on the inside of the leg or, you know, what have you. And, uh, you know, it's really shaped up to, to make some nice forms uh, as a figure, you know, as a cyborg character. So uh, continuing on, I cropped it. And I think I, I didn't use too many layers, but uh, I did use here a gradation layer. And so it's just like a single gradation on a transparent layer. And then I believe I changed it over to screen finally. And usually when I do something like this, you know, uh, depending on what kind of look I want to achieve, I'll actually play with the adjustment layers and see 
you know, which one that I want. Uh, do I want multiply? Do I want screen lighten? Uh, you know, do I want overlay? And then therefore, you know, I can see each one and try it out. And so finally, I think I landed with, uh, I believe it was screen, which uh, made some of the darker fills a little bit more pale. So like if there was a light source above that's kind of glowy, uh, you know, it, it's, it's along with that posterization look, you know, it made it a nice little subtle color uh, change from, you know, uh, the more prominent uh, orange fill into just a little bit more purple. Yeah, like maybe there's neon off to the side, but you know, graphic in the nature that you know we're dealing in sort of like a monochromatic uh, color scheme. And going along, just like before, you know, again with the clone tool and using my tone file, I came in and just used some simple tones. Uh, for something like this, you know, uh, if I want a more graphic look, I'm not going to go crazy with uh, using too many different uh, various line screens. I'm just going to probably pick at best two, and so uh, there's there's two different ways that this could probably work, and that's you know using the shade as it is in black over the line art, um, and I lay it in as such. But probably pretty soon, what I'll do is I'll just duplicate that tone layer afterwards, keeping the original black dot shades, and then uh, using the nudge tool. Uh, if I select all and then nudge it up and back down into its original place, it'll make a very tight selection uh, rather than actually, I believe there's, I believe it's shift and clicking on the layer uh, will actually select everything. But I think this mask is actually a little bit tighter when you actually nudge it and move it. It grabs every pixel surrounding the objects. So, and then I fill it with uh, a, a pink that's at the top. So thank you very much for viewing this uh, demo, and I really appreciate uh, having the chance and the opportunity. Thank you everyone at Pixelogic, and uh, thanks again. Cheers.